I'm going to start working on the inside of the car because I know I can finish that before the outside. For the seatbelt, I only bought the pretensioner, which is the part at the bottom. The part at the top is the retractor, and I need to buy that, of course, because the seatbelt is not retracting anymore. It already fired off, so I'm going to start taking apart the seatbelt and see if I can get this all out of the car. It should be pretty easy. The next thing I'm going to take off is the steering wheel airbag. I also need to take off the wheel and get to the clock spring behind it just to make sure that it didn't get damaged in the accident. Um, I checked out all the buttons and they do seem to work, but um, I didn't try it with the wheel turned or anything or the horn, so it still could be damaged. On some cars the airbag is easy to get off. There's usually some screws to it right here, but for this one I'm going to have to disassemble the wheel console because the screws for it are right there. So I'll take this off and then I should be able to get to some screws that take off the wheel airbag. Okay, I just watched a video. I didn't have to take the console off now, but I would anyway, so it's fine. Um, but the, the steering wheel airbag is not bolted on like I thought. It has plastic clips that hold it on. There are three plastic tabs that are back here that I have to push on, so that's kind of a weird way of holding in the airbag, but that's Kia, I guess. This is way too easy. Oh my god. That, sh that shouldn't be a thing. Like your airbag should not come out that easily. Seems like these tabs are really common on this car just to indicate that there's an airbag system that you're disconnecting. Which is kind of nice. There's two on this. That might mean that there's two explosive charges in here. And there's the airbag, completely out of the car. Now I'll take off the steering wheel. It has a 21 millimeter bolt in the middle. See if I can get this off. There we go. Okay, so this spinning part is the clock spring. There we go. 
I check the continuity of the airbag. These two plugs go to the airbag and I've got one end in my multimeter and inside the plug when I connect it you can see how it has very little resistance and I've already turned the clock spring around completely both ways and it still shows the same amount of low resistance so the clock spring is okay I also checked the um, auxiliary switches and stuff that go onto your steering wheel and those are fine too so this clock spring is good and I'll put it back in the car when I came back over here to put this on I realized I didn't mark the steering wheel so I don't actually know where the steering wheel if it's supposed to be like this or like this but I was looking at the wheels and their turns so I've already put the wheel on the car and I'll show you how I did it so I put this string and I attached it to this jack stand which holds it behind the rear wheel and then I go over here and I hold the string up so I know this wheel is in alignment when I touch the string to the front of the front tire and it touches the back of the front tire at the exact same time and without moving the wheel I did this on the other side and it's exactly the same so that means that during the crash the wheels never lost their alignment so that's pretty awesome and since the wheel has splines there's only um, one other position that's close to this that I could put it in and it would be pretty tilted so this is the closest to straight up and down that it could be. I'm going to bolt down the steering wheel and reattach this console but I'm not going to put in the airbag because I didn't get a new SRS module yet and I don't want to turn on the car with an airbag just because I don't want it blowing up. I've got two more fasteners down here and two screws up here and I think I can pull the rest of this console out. With the center console removed, it feels so roomy in here. With its front wheel drive, they could have put a bench seat right here and just removed all of this. And you could have like so much leg room. There's already a lot of leg room in here, even with the console. But um, yeah, they could have just like made it super open. Anyways, this is the SRS module that I need to remove. I've had the battery unplugged for days now, so there's no power in the system. Kia said that if you're going to remove this normally, you would just unplug the battery for 30 seconds and all of the capacitors would discharge in the system so you could uh, move this box around without blowing up all the airbags in the car. So I'm going to get this sent out and reset for me because if I buy a new one, I have to have one of those really expensive like $1,500 computers to program it back to the car. So that's why I'm getting it reset. Once I start reassembling the car, that's when I'll put the airbags in. But right now I'm going to work on this radiator. So here's the damage to the radiator. It's pretty minor and I can totally bend that out. On the back side, the coolant storage tank got broken in the accident. It's actually really bad. I'm pretty good at plastic welding, but 
this is a bit too much for what I could do. I would have to basically rebuild this part and this is also cracked which isn't too big of a problem. Um, the mounting hinges for this are also broken and this coolant lid I'm not even sure if what I could do to this because it's sort of warped. Because this is so broken and I really can't fix that I had to buy a whole new unit because they wouldn't just sell me this part. And here's the replacement. It's aftermarket obviously because it doesn't match. Every part that I've bought for the car so far has been OEM. But I think I saved maybe $70 by buying this, so I don't know. I'm not proud of it. But I'm going to put it on and hopefully it doesn't catch on fire. Okay, we've got some problems. So I put the new radiator fan on top of the old fan, and on this side, the mounting brackets line up but on this side that lines up but this is totally off so here are my options and returning this is not going to be one of them I could take that bottle off and put it on this one which might be possible but this one does kind of look wider than this one so it may not even fit but if I could do that then I just need to fix the top and the bottom of this that's the option for this one and then for this one I can cut this off and then plastic weld it down a little bit lower. So I'll try my first idea and see if that water bottle will fit onto this one. Okay, I don't think this idea will work. Basically, I just don't think there's a good surface for me to actually put this on. So now my plan is to cut off, I think it's this tab here. I take all this off too and move it over so it's supported. Okay, unfortunately I found a hole in this radiator near the end here. I'm not very surprised that there's a leak. The car was missing a lot of radiator fluid and it was sort of dripping it down onto our trailer when we were towing it. And this is the very top of the radiator, so that's why it had fluid in it when it was sitting like that. So the bad news is I can't fix a hole in the radiator. I've tried doing that before on another radiator and it just doesn't work like aluminum welding. I just can't do it. So I'm going to buy another one. It's $85. I looked it up. That's worth it for me. I'd say it's a fair price. One of the headlights got totally smashed in the accident. So I bought a new one of those, but this one is on the left side and only two tabs broke on it on the top. So I'm repairing that with plastic welding, which you saw me do earlier. I think plastic welding is something everyone should try out. It's really fun. I just use a generic 60 watt soldering iron to melt the plastic and I do it outside because the plastic does get a bit of smoke going when it's burning. But um, I also wear a respirator. You could put a fan on outside and it would blow all the smoke away from you and it would be okay. But yeah, you can pretty much plastic weld any different type of plastic and plastic gets broken really easily so it's just awesome to like fix stuff around the house and have it just like brand new again. Well that's it for this video. I did some other stuff but I'm gonna save it for the next video because I'm gonna try to do the engine removal in the next video and this stuff kinda relates to that so I'll see you in the next video.